thank you kaho for giving me this opportunity to share this very very important session on scaling technology building on covid so we all know that we have uh, i think we were in technology from before covid we will not say we were not there in technology before covid and kaho tech has been uh, conducting these uh, technological updates even before covid but yes now is the time to build up and scale up on what we have learned what experience we have gained and have we scaled up have we grown have we progressed have been able to adopt the technology based upon the needs of the clientele the needs of the recipients what better way to have people with us who have gone through it who have been in this and who have got their own case studies and own success stories to share with us so i think i am very grateful to kao tech for giving me such an elite panel who have the experience who are going to share with us today some of their own individual case studies and will tell us how the technology can be scaled post covid covid to take it to the next higher level i have with us uh, dr ajay nayar so you know dr ajay nayar is not only a professional doctor but he is very much involved in public health sector in as a public health doctor as an entrepreneur and a social impact investor with a deep interest in digital health health systems and public health he is the ceo of the swast alliance which is a non profit alliance that builds uh, digital health infrastructure and standards for public good Now, SWAST basically aims to create public digital health infrastructure to ease the patient journey within this what we saw was a fragmented health system, and which can help you to deliver better clinical outcomes. Uh, before this, he was also the co-founder and who had led the Mera Doctor to become one of the India's largest telemedicine networks, serving over seven hundred thousand patients in every state of the country. and before he started the startup journey of his he was an impact investor at acumen fund in new york and nairobi focusing on health and energy and for all of you uh, just a small introduction about his qualifications he received his mbbs from grant medical college mumbai and his masters in public health from harvard university boston he is a fellow of the 7th uh, class of the kamal nayan and bajaj fellowship within the aspen global leadership network so i think he is going to tell us about the interface between public the payers the private people and the people themselves so over to you dr ajay uh, for sharing your experiences and maybe making some case study uh, for everybody else to emulate later over to you dr ajay thank you so much dr kapoor and uh, thank you som thank you dr agarwal for having me here um i don't know if uh, you all remember this but uh, two years ago when i started off at swast uh, one of the first meetings at which we had presented what swast was doing um, was at the kaho tech event uh, i think it was um, held in uh, kerala at that point i remember it was baby memorial hospital uh, so it's really great to be back uh, and actually present you uh, an update if you'll indulge me and i know there'll be a very little time Uh, I'd like to share uh, where we are at Swast uh, since then. Uh, share what the last two years have been like, uh, and quickly talk about uh, what we are building next. Uh, uh, so we'll very quickly talk about what Swast is. Right. So Swast uh, is really a alliance of over 150 organizations that came together during uh, the beginning of the first wave um, uh, in 2020. and the mission initially obviously was to actually had support the national uh, mission on uh, responding to the pandemic uh, but also in the longer run uh, figure out a way to use the alliance to leverage digital health technologies to drive healthcare inclusion and outcomes uh, and i'll i'll come back to this uh, very quickly after we go through our covid experience uh, raghavendra was going to speak after me is going to talk about the great work that they've done on telemedicine uh, we also had a telemedicine program in the first wave uh which uh was what swast started with uh it was deployed across the country in multiple states 
uh, served over 260,000 patients, uh, had the entire continuum of care links. So it was teleconsultations, pharmacies, diagnostics, uh, remote monitoring, hospital integration, as well as mental health. And this was also presented to the Honorable Prime Minister of India in July 2020. And like I said, had partnerships with multiple state governments. Uh, in the second wave, uh, we shifted back. Uh, we had two broad efforts. So there was one effort on technology data and care protocols. Uh, so we actually worked with a range of academic uh, clinicians from across the world on creating evidence-based care protocols that could be deployed during COVID, uh, the second wave, uh, which is part of the SWAST Community Science Alliance. We are happy to report this is now spun out into its own entity and will continue working, uh, especially with primary care uh, and preventive care. We also had a online resource database because if you remember, people were scrambling to find access to, you know, everything from oxygen to drugs to figuring out ambulances, local helplines, et cetera. So we also had a local resource database that was uh, verified by uh, you know, over 200 volunteers who actually verified these uh, numbers and called and checked. And this was also made available during the second wave of COVID. Uh, during the second wave of COVID, a our, our, uh, significant amount of our effort was actually on uh, what is eventually ended up being one of India's largest private emergency oxygen efforts. Uh, they started very early in the second wave. We covered over 500 districts, over 60,000 devices, 80% uh, of which uh, went to public centers, often right down to the block level. Uh, and this is all really part of the uh, this COVID efforts that SWAST was part of. Uh, now I'll, I'll swing back and, and talk a little bit about what we are solving for in the long run. Uh, this is a very learned group, so I don't really need to actually you know, belabor any of this, uh, but our health system in this country has some very, very unique challenges. Uh, as Sangeeta mentioned earlier, uh, there is what we see as an epidemiological shift, the shift from infectious disease and nutritional deficiencies to non-communicable diseases. Uh, but as the shift is happening, most states in India also have a very high dual burden of diseases, both NCDs as well as communicable diseases and nutritional deficiencies. And this really requires a lot of innovation in how care is delivered. Uh, we also have, you know, up to 500 to 700 million people who are at financial risk from expenditure on uh, healthcare and uh, who are vulnerable to poverty uh, with catastrophic expenditure on healthcare. Um, we also lag uh, in health key health indicators, uh, you know, when compared to countries at a similar state of economic development. Uh, there are lots of reasons for this, uh, but I'll try and sort of draw out some of the key things that are relevant to our conversation today. Uh, there is tremendous fragmentation, obviously. There are, you know, there's a long tail of uh, many small uh, healthcare providers who uh, are not necessarily able to work together to deliver uh, a great experience to the consumer of high outcomes. Uh, there is very low public uh, public funding. There is a very high percentage of out-of-pocket payments on healthcare. Uh, we also obviously lack human resources, doctors, and especially nurses. Uh, we also have a lack of infrastructure, especially when it comes to uh, rural parts of the country. There's a huge urban-rural divide. Uh, and there is uh, inadequate governance and regulation in the health sector, right? So there is uh, a lot of diversity. Health is split between the center and the state, and there's a lot of diversity there. Um, I'll talk a little bit about national health systems, uh, and I really like the fact that Sagita spoke about universal health coverage because I feel like we really need to figure out a plan to get the universal health coverage, not in our lifetimes, not in the next 10, 20 years, but you know, in a much, much shorter time frame. Because you know, while we can uh, set goals for the country and say that we will become a developed country by 2047, uh, we are not going to be able to do that if we don't solve for health and education uh, for everybody in the country, right? And when you look at, when you zoom out and look at national health systems, there are many kinds of national health systems. Um, and here they're classified on the basis of who's paying and how the care is being delivered. And again, like I said, it comes in many flavors. We are on the leftmost. Uh, which is we are mostly out of pocket and we have mixed delivery where we have a large private sector and, and also government sector delivering care. The private sector is a huge majority of the care that people actually access. Um, but And on the extreme right side, you have government finance, government delivered care, which you see in places like Cuba, you might see it in Thailand, you might see it in a bunch of other places. Uh, but most countries operate uh, you know, with a mix of many different models. Uh, but where we are operating, where a large chunk of the healthcare payments are really coming from out-of-pocket payments from the uh, from the user or from the patient, 
uh, is a system that is actually prone to very large market failures uh, and also has very poor outcomes. So we definitely need to shift out of that. But to shift to anything else, uh, we really need to have uh, standards, data, better contracting systems, uh, better regulation, a lot more innovation to actually facilitate that shift. Uh, and you know the rest of the, the next few slides. I'm just going to talk about our approach to helping facilitate this shift away from a mostly out-of-pocket system, and think about how we can actually how do you really build infrastructure to achieve universal health coverage? And again, I think Pramod had spoken about this earlier, uh, which is that uh, you really need to figure out a way to leverage every available resource uh, to deliver something at massive scale. Uh, and uh, this is in fact a slide that I've actually taken from Pramod uh, from his UPI example. Um, where, you know, which sort of talks about how India is building technology very differently uh, from the West and from elsewhere in the world, uh, where we, have, we are taking an open network approach to healthcare, right? So UPI, for example, is not one app uh, launched by the RBI that all of us are using. Uh, UPI is really a protocol. So what you see in the screen at the bottom uh, layer is digital public goods, and this could be the UPI protocol. Uh, on top of which runs digital public infrastructure, which is really NPCI running a switch and infrastructure on top. Uh, and then you have a lot of public and private innovation sitting right on top, right? So you have a public app like Beam or the state PSU banks, uh, but you also have private banks, but you also have things like Paytm, Google Pay, et cetera. Uh, this gives the end user a huge variety uh, of options to choose from and drives a tremendous amount of innovation. Uh, imagine the amount of innovation that we would have had if there was only one UPI service available as opposed to the wide variety you have right now. And this seems like a very interesting approach uh, because it really harnesses what else is out there in the ecosystem, right? And we are trying uh, that with uh, healthcare payments. And uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, Ram Sevakji has spoken about this right in the beginning of the uh, session. Uh, this is part of the Aishpan Bharat Digital Health Mission. Uh, we call this the Health Claims Exchange. Uh, and this is really a unified backbone for healthcare financing. Uh, the way this works is that we are building common data standards for information exchange between providers and payers. The provider today is a, because you know all insurance is paying for today is hospitalization and all Aishpan Bharat and PMJY is paying for is hospitalization. The providers today are hospitals, but frankly, we don't see why it should be limited to hospitals. It should also go on to labs, pharmacies, smaller clinics, et cetera, over time. Uh, and uh, so this health claim exchange really links the links every provider in the country uh, with every payer in the country, including public payers. Uh, what this does is that it dramatically improves patient experience. Today, a patient might you know, might take five hours to six hours to 12, 12 hours, sometimes 24 hours of the patient to get discharged from the hospital. <clears throat> when this is deployed and working fully, it should really bring that time down very, very dramatically. Uh, it also gives the hospital a lot more visibility and tracking in terms of payments, in terms of their receivable cycle, uh, and managing the money that they're actually due from the insurer. Uh, it uh, lowers the cost of processing the claim. Today, it's you know, anywhere between 500 and 2000 rupees. We believe that with something like this, it can come down to under 10 rupees. Uh, it dramatically improves the speed at which claims are processed, and it paves the way for auto adjudication, where you essentially can have a lot of these claims be processed automatically and the hospital be paid instantly, as opposed to waiting for an adjudication process to go through. Uh, so this is really the health claims exchange. It is modeled in the same UPI framework where we have at the bottom layer, you have the health claims exchange specifications and reference software that SWAST is anchoring and building. Uh, we have uh, the HCX networks that are being built on top of this. Uh, the NHA has adopted the same protocol. They're also building a network for PMJY. We are working with a lot of the private insurers and private hospitals to build out a network that touches the private ecosystem. Uh, and we and what will happen on top of this is that we believe that there'll be a lot more innovation on top, uh, both from a payer side and from a provider side. Uh, and this has been also, you know, this is not something that we've done in a silo. This is something that we've done uh, in a very, very widely collaborative effort, right? So we've worked with a range of hospitals. Uh, we've also been very grateful for the mentoring that CAHO has given us and AHPI has given us. Uh, and, and this is not something that can be done uh, without really building trust in the ecosystem. And we continue to uh, make an effort to do that. Uh, we believe that this is... Uh, 
the beginning of an immensely impactful uh, health benefits ecosystem that connects everybody, uh, connects the providers, connects labs, hospitals, pharmacies, but also connects public and private payers. Uh, there might be other folks who are paying for care that, you know, employers pay for care directly in, in many cases. There are cooperatives and nonprofit payers and uh, community based insurance providers. Uh, but this really creates this one ecosystem that where everybody is able to plug in. Uh, and I think, as was mentioned earlier, uh, the attempt is to really, you know, how do you leverage everybody, uh, every available resource in the country uh, to actually build the kind of health system that the country needs and deserves? I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ajay. I think it was a very nice, very lucid presentation. I thank all of you for your elaborate presentation of covering the subject so lucidly and sharing your experiences. Uh, all I would like Kaho to do is to take over from here because now we are just talking of scaling up technology, but these dots have to be connected. And these dots have to be connected to give it up, give a holistic you know, angle the entire technology usage in the healthcare delivery system to reach out to the unreachables. Uh, I know we have problems, but we have solutions. I also know that it is easy to cry and make things difficult for us, but I believe that to make things easier, it is better to try than to cry. So uh, thank you very much all of you. Thank you Kao, for giving all of us this opportunity to share our views.